Henan Barral before meeting TJ Dillashaw hadn't lost a fight in nine years. He had won 29 fights in a row. And here's one reason why nobody was able to take him out. The frame defense of Henan Barral. When his opponents attack him and they rush him with strikes, he likes to frame and step back and pivot off. This simple frame right here has kept him from getting hit on the chin for 29 fights. As his opponents come in, he uses his arms to frame, classic Muay Thai defense, and pivots off to safety. When TJ was fighting uh, Henan Morale, Henan Morale was taking his defensive posture like he always does, the, the Muay Thai frame. TJ would switch his stance and land a straight left down the middle. Now the reason why this was so effective for TJ is because TJ was expecting him to do it. And as soon as Barral would go into his frame, TJ would switch, pivot off, and land the strike. If he missed the strike, he was off to a safe uh, direction, he got, got a good angle. If he got the strike, he would follow up a different attack. So he would come in here, if he would catch the strike, he would keep striking and, and attacking his opponent. The few times he did miss it, no, no consequence. A lot of guys try to pressure forward and throw the right hand. But you see Hennem Burrell always blocks the right hand. TJ was smart enough to switch sides. Once she switches sides, the cross is now the left hand. There's no defense to the cross. He would penetrate in and connect right on the chin. Now another thing that really hurt Burrell in this fight was that he was unable to use the spinning kick he loved so much. You saw in his previous fights, he's knocked out a few guys with it. TJ was really prepared for this. He used his footwork to get out of range, and Boral wasn't able to use one of his most powerful strikes, the spinning kick to the face. Here's what TJ did to counter that. Now this was something that took uh, Boral by surprise, because Boral was very good with landing that kick, but as soon as he would turn around, TJ already knew what he was up to, and bang, would counter him. It's like TJ knew, wa watched a lot of video of uh, Henan Boral, and Henan Boral didn't study what TJ's been doing. In round number one, TJ landed a very crucial combination that created a domino effect and won him this fight. The first thing he did that, that made a big difference in this fight was the level change to uppercut. We all know TJ Dillashaw is a good wrestler and Barral knows it as well. As soon as TJ would change level, Barral changed level with him because he wanted to defend that takedown. Uh, TJ Dillashaw came right up with the uppercut, caught Barral right on the chin in round number one and changed the momentum of the fight for the worse for Barral. So here's how it works. If TJ changes the level and Barral doesn't, there's an easy takedown. If Barral does, TJ comes right back up with some powerful strikes. Now don't forget, when you change level to defend the takedown, you're going into the strike. So you have a double impact effect. And that's what happened in round number one. And that's why I think uh, Barral had a concussion in round number one. And his reflexes were shot and power was shot. Kudos to TJ, he set it up, he knows his opponents, and he executed this technique beautifully. I think we're going to see more of the same in, in fight number two, uh, but it's going to be a little tighter this time because Barral is going to be on his toes. One of the key strikes used by TJ Dillashaw is what we call the money maker. You saw Steven Wonderboy Thompson use this in his debut fight in UFC and get an epic KO. You saw Carlos Condit knock down George with it in round number three of their fight. And you saw TJ Dillashaw knock down Barral with it as well in their epic first fight. Here's how it works. First thing you want to do is you want to dip your head off to the side like you are punching. Commonly in Muay Thai when they kick, Thai boxing, they keep their bodies upright. Not so with the money maker. With the money maker, you want to go in like you're punching. As you're in punching range and in a boxing posture, you bring your leg up and kick. Now when you throw this kick, you're really deep on the inside and you want to be crouched down like a, like a boxer. One other very important detail is never let your head come up. Because when your head comes up, you're telegraphing the kick. TJ Dillashaw was really wise on this. He kept his head down, he stayed in boxing posture, and as Barral thought this was boxing posture, he would throw the heavy kick. Watch that fight again, you're gonna see that kick was a crucial factor in this fight. TJ Dillashaw, I expect him to control the range. Now when Barral starts fighting with TJ, he's not gonna wanna kick so often because TJ has great takedowns. Now if he doesn't want to kick, he's going to have to get in boxing range to do his striking because since he can't throw too many kicks without risk, he's going to have to get in close. When he does get in close, he's going to be exposed to the takedown. If he stays far out, TJ is going to mix in the kicks. TJ has no fear in kicking. If he does get taken down, which would be unlikely, he will probably just get up really quickly. And that's why I'm giving this fight to TJ Dillashaw. Not only is he technically superior, I think he is going to control the range better and he's gonna be able to control this fight on the inside and the outside. Next, we have Barral's blind spot. When Barral is fighting, he likes to keep his chin tucked like most Muay Thai fighters. He keeps it overly tucked when they're training. 
But when you're tucked like this, your orbital bone here, your bone of your eye here is blocking your vision. So when your opponents throw overhands, it's very hard for you to see the strike, the angle that it's coming at you. Now if you have your chin up, a lot of fighters fight with their chin up, it's much easier to see all these circular strikes, but you, don't, you start not being able to see the low kicks because your nose and cheekbones are blocking your lower vision. Now when you look at Barrao, his chin is really low. And if you notice, TJ Dillashaw was quite often able to land the overhand right. He would come in here with the jabs, jab, jab, and overhand right. Barrao, as he was jabbing, as TJ was jabbing, was ducking his chin down. Now as he throw the right hand, it was a little too late for him to react because this punch is already traveling so fast, it would hit Barrao right on the temple and he scored quite often with it. This is a tough fight both ways, but I just believe that TJ Dillashaw has added one too many tricks to his arsenal that Henan Barrao just doesn't know and doesn't understand. Now Henan Barrao has been very successful for a long time, but he's been doing the same formula for so long that I think it's just fighters are figuring him out and catching up and TJ Dillashaw knows Barral like the back of his hand. And I think that's why he's gonna come out on top on fight night.